according to the governor of Alaska, Mike Dunleavy, uh, sanctioning Alaska more than he has sanctioned Iran. Governor Dunleavy, welcome to the program. Hey, Glenn, good morning. Hey, good morning. So uh, I know it's really early for you. Um, uh, Thank you for being on the program. That's quite a statement to make. Well, it is, but if you look at the 55, 56 actions now, compared to the 19 actions that have been uh, set against Iran in two, starting in 2005, this is 55 actions since the Biden administration came into office against one of its own states, a resource-producing state like Alaska. And so it is serious. It is real. And um, w- many of us in Alaska view it as, a, as an economic war on Alaska. So 56 executive orders and actions targeting your state. Can you go through some of them? Oh, uh, absolutely. Uh, so, for example, in 2017, under the JOBS Act that was, uh, that was passed by Congress and signed into law by President Trump, now that required lease sales in Anwar, the uh, Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, the coastal plain area that was always up for oil production anyway. Those leases were sold, and then under the Biden administration, they unilaterally canceled them. That's a violation of law. That's huge because that has one of the last remaining large oil and gas fines, probably in North America. That was taken off the list. Offshore oil leases in the Arctic, off the list. 13 million acres in NPRA. Now, NPRA, National Petroleum Reserve, up in Alaska that was founded over 100 years ago under President Hardy, its sole purpose was to provide oil for the nation. It was a naval, preserve, a naval petroleum preserve at first. And so the, this is just a, a handful of, 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 of incidents of what, what we call sanctions against Alaska that make it difficult for us to produce oil, um, makes it difficult for us to mine, makes it difficult for us to even get into the uh, Tongass National Forest for timber, the largest national forest in the United States. We really can't get into that forest to, so, to harvest timber. This is one thing that I have I've not experienced, um, so I don't know if I understand it. They're, they're no longer building roads or maintaining any of the roads, so you can't get in uh, to, to haul lumber out. And then they've also banned you from taking out uh, mature lumber. Is that yeah. right? Old, old growth, that's correct. Old growth. And that... And not only are they not building roads, they dismantled all of the, um, the, 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 the mills that were in southeast Alaska. And this happened under the, uh, under the Clinton administration. However, under President Trump, he began to restore it as an actual working force for, for timber, for mining, for recreation. And then when the Biden administration came in, they once again closed it down again. And so it's just been a series um, each year of different actions, different executive orders that uh, are targeted against Alaska. And, Glenn, here's the interesting thing I don't think your listeners understand about Alaska. We were the only state required at statehood in 1959, in our Statehood Act, we were required to collectivize all of the resources in Alaska under the government, under the state government. And the reason for that is those that were, were contemplating allowing Alaska to become a state felt it had too small of a population, about 150 to 200,000 people, to pay for itself through things like an income tax or a statewide sales tax. So they compelled us to collectivize those resources, to develop those resources to pay for ourselves. And that's the the cruel irony of this whole thing is we were allowed to come in as a state uh, as long as we developed our resources. And now we're being told we can't develop our resources, Mm -hmm. which means our viability as a state is in question. I'm looking at the the map um, of Alaska, and by the way, you know this. Alaska is far more beautiful than anybody could ever describe. It is stunning, um, and it's also enormous. Flying over Alaska, you're like, when does this state ever end? Um, but uh, I'm looking at the map. You maybe have... Maybe a third of Alaska is not protected now? Uh, pretty much. Yes, that's correct. And as a matter of fact, uh, you know, we had national parks before 1980. And in the waning days of Jimmy Carter, 
his gift to Alaska on the way out was to build even more monuments and wilderness areas, taking up millions and millions of acres off the table for Alaska's ability, once again, to develop some of those resources. And by the way, Glenn, we develop our resources, uh, the little that we're allowed to, in probably the most responsible manner in the world. And what, what, what really befuddles many of us up here is the environmentalists obviously have their hooks in this administration, and they don't want to have any development in Alaska, but they're okay with it going overseas to places like Iran, to places like China, to places like Venezuela, where the environment is not protected, human rights are not protected, and as we know in the case of Iran, uh, they're now producing 3.74 million barrels of oil per day. They're using some of that money to fund terrorism throughout the Middle East. So none of it makes any sense to us. So how is this impacting you as a state, your state funds, and the people who do business up in Alaska? Well, great question. So what happens is there's a, there's a chill uh, for investment in Alaska. In other words, outfits that would otherwise be investing in mining, oil, gas, timber, they go other places because the uncertainty uh, caused by this administration and these actions leveled against Alaska, once again, 55, I think it's 56 now, just make it, a, it such an uncertain situation that investors don't want to come here. Our population right now is pretty much stagnant. We haven't grown in the last, uh, you know, the last uh, few years because of uh, some of these actions. We, um, we have many of our young people are actually leaving the state and going to the lower 48 where there's more opportunity. And so the impact on our, on our coffers is, um, is, is going to be significant. Right now, we, get, we, we run about 490,000 barrels through our pipeline. We were able to get Willow, the Willow project passed or allowed to be uh, uh, put into play. And so with that investment, we should get another 140,000 uh, barrels here in the next several years. But nonetheless, when we're looking at the midterm, Glenn, in the long term, the prospects don't look very good for investors, don't look very good for opportunity in Alaska. And, and really what this appears to many Alaskans is an attempt to just turn Alaska into a big national park. And, uh, you know, uh, absolutely hamstring the viability of the state going forward. So it's an uncertain situation which causes a, a lack of investment and uncertainty. I have to tell you, if Congress doesn't take their power back and, and, and take, their, take the uh, unconstitutional power uh, away from the administrative offices, uh, we, 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 we're not free and we have no way to fight this. What are you doing to fight well, we're, we, we've, had a, we've had a lawyer up, unfortunately. We've asked our legislature the past several years for millions, in do, for millions of dollars uh, in funds for what we call our statehood defense to fight against their own federal government in order to slow down what these agencies are doing, in order to try and reverse some of the things that these agencies are doing. And so we end up spending money, <clears throat> again, against our own federal agencies, our own federal government, and I mean, Glenn, you know that the federal government has unlimited resources. Mm -hmm. State like Alaska does does not, and so we're fighting them. We're trying to uh, enlist the help of other, uh, you know, other states. We've been talking with other uh, uh, congressmen and senators from other states, uh, explaining Alaska's situation. We're getting, I think, uh, a good reception, especially from those on the uh, Republican side. I also have to say, senators like Joe Manchin from a resource state like West Virginia. Uh, has been very sympathetic to the plight of Alaska. He understands it well. So we're trying to build up, uh, we're trying to build up a group of uh, legislators, congressmen, senators, uh, and other governors to understand what's going on with Alaska. Because once it happens here, and if they're able to uh, be successful at snuffing out the, uh, the, the future of Alaska in terms of a development state, there's no, there's no telling where they're going to stop. This is so concerning. Um... How can we help, Mike? Well, this is, I mean, the form you're giving me right now is a great way to get this out to people. And people, people need to understand that, as you said, Glenn, Alaska is a very beautiful place. And, and because of that, we do take care of it. We have some of the strictest environmental regulations there is. The state itself put them in. So we know how to develop our resources. Right. But what the Biden administration is doing is just trying to kill off the whole enterprise. And so just letting people know, 
sharing the 55 actions that uh, uh, Dan Sullivan, our senator, had put together on that right. sheet is going to be helpful. And then we're going to be getting some uh, congressmen and senators up here, hopefully this summer, so they can see on the ground how well we take care of the state, but also see the, uh, the impact. Yeah. Of what the Biden administration is doing. So, Governor, let us know how we can help other than other than this. Keep us informed on this, because, as you say, th- they pick on the one that nobody really is paying attention to. And if they can do this to Alaska, they'll do it to a lot of our states. Uh, thank you very much. From Alaska, Governor of Alaska. Glenn Beck. Governor Mike Dunleavy.